All right. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you all for coming. And uh, you know, I know the events team set us up this way. Uh, a, we can spread out. B, you can do all your emails on the table while I'm spot talking, right? That's the concept. But thank you very much. Uh, special thanks for this audience here who took the time. And I know it's a hard time to travel, you know, especially with uh, restrictions and approvals and all that. So really appreciate it. And thank you all for uh, staying awake. Some of you are, you know, it's probably midnight by now, but you know, with the live broadcast on a virtual audience. So thank you all. Uh, so we're, we are really excited today. Uh, because this is probably after three years we are meeting. Some of you have maintained, some of you have thinned down. I won't talk about the other crew, but uh, really, really good to see you all, right? It's, it's been three years almost since we had the one summit. So appreciate you all coming, and we have a fantastic program. So a few announcements, and then I'll get on the way. Uh, first of all, Thank you to the diamond sponsor, Dell. You'll hear from, uh, from Dell on uh, you know, some of the, the latest uh, and greatest. Uh, plus, thank you to all the sponsors. And with that, I am going to start my 2022 edition of Open Source Networking and Edge. So as I said, thank you to Dell and all the sponsors here, without which you, know, you cannot do this. Um, and let me start off with a few key messages, which is what we saw in 2022. Technology-wise, three main things happened. Open source accelerated in all areas of networking, core cloud, edge IoT, and access ORAN, okay? Um, you know that, but it is good to recognize, step back, and sort of say, good. The other big thing happened was 5G hit the tipping point. It crossed 50%. And according to some analysts, it's heading to a $7 trillion economic value by 2030. Huge market. And then finally, I think uh, this is very important, but we saw a radical shift of open networks and frameworks completely built of cloud native. Right, so you know it was it was thought about a couple of years ago. I remember two, three years ago when we announced it at Mobile World Congress, uh, the term itself, right? Um, and then uh, you know we are seeing a rapid adoption of that. So this is good news, right? And this is the technology side of things. If you look at the markets, and there are some awesome analysts in the room who will talk about where things are heading tomorrow. But from our perspective, uh, the the global collaboration of these projects continue. And they continue irrespective of economic and political headwinds. And you know, we all recognize that and we appreciate that. So first of all, I think I want to stop and give you all a big round of applause for continuing through the political headwinds. Thank you. <laughs> Open source is probably the only uh, area where, uh, you know, I wouldn't say we are not impacted, but we have the ability to just cross borders, boundaries, countries, geo, whatever, right? And that's because it is adding value to build some of the most innovative enough infrastructure and code that is non-differentiated, obviously. The second big thing that happened this year was public cloud and telecom companies figured out a way to win, have a win-win model, right? Five years ago, three years ago, they were competing no longer, right? And this is again because of open source, right? Those frameworks came in handy. And then I think finally enterprises are starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel with private networks, with open architectures, with multi-cloud, specifically network as a service. So we're starting to see that in the market side of things, right? So technology, markets, I know you know that you're experts, but it's always good to step back and, and sort of recognize that. The collaboration, is better than ever, okay? I wouldn't bore you with stats, but any graph that goes on the upside is good, right? Whether it's projects like DPDK or Dent or ORAN or umbrellas like LF Edge, LF Networking. Three years, five years, and this is, by the way, contributor strength. So really strong, really strong growth through November. So that's kind of the data. You can get that off the LFX Insight tools that uh, Linux Foundation has. 
if you zoom in on LF networking, some of these stats even blow my mind, right? You all, as a community, are adding over 182,000 lines of code weekly across all projects, right? There's not one project. But that's the power of open source innovation, global collaboration. I won't go into all the stats, but huge, huge momentum, right? So thank you, and thank you for continuing the momentum on the networking side. On the LF Edge side, the community finally saw a a lot of releases come out from open source. Acrano, which is sort of the framework for blueprints in LF Edge, came out with release six, three new blueprints, 25 plus, very powerful use case deployments that you can repeat, right? Cloud gaming, connected cars, you name it. Edgex Foundry, the IoT framework, huge release for, uh, for 2.3 that came out. Ekuiper came out with a new release. This is on data analytics. Fledge, very interesting. This is an IIoT framework and under constrained devices, constrained environment. You know, little did we know that a project like Fledge would help with wine and canola, canola oil production. Right? If you don't know that, you know, read it. Right? That's how edge computing and the industrial manufacturing has gone in. And then, of course, home edge uh, has, has been uh, phenomenal in terms of adding frameworks. So this, all these projects, and I'm not going to talk about Eve because we have Said coming up as, as a keynote. Uh, but overall, the edge computing community, which, by the way, is four times the size of cloud computing market, is getting and graduating. Okay? And then, of course, deployment is accelerating uh, globally. So, there's some clip outs, right, or, or call outs, or whatever you want to call it, right? All projects, deployments, et cetera, et cetera. So I won't go into that. All the case studies, everything is up on the, on the website. But it feels good when innovation and open source projects from experiments solve real world examples. And so with that, I'm going to make several announcements today. I mean, what's a conference without announcements, right? Uh, but again, without me boring you all, I'm going to call the owner of the announcement to sort of come on stage, join me for a couple of minutes, talk about it. You can read on or uh, talk about it later on. So the first announcement is um, uh, by Catherine. So Catherine, if you can come up. Uh, she's the AVP of software development at AT&T. Um, here's your mic. And um, she's one of the most well-respected entities in open source software. And uh, she's going to announce the next release, which is the cone release. And I, I need to say a few words before she gets into the details. This release is dedicated to the late Dan Kahn, uh, one of our senior executives at, at LF. He used to run CNCF. Uh, he passed away. But we, he partnered with us, us in LFN about three years ago, we jointly announced the term cloud native. And it was, it was phenomenal that he helped influence and shape the networking industry to move towards cloud native. And so the TSC and the technical team, thanks to the ONAP community, have dedicated this release that's coming out like in days, and it's called Cone Release. So uh, a round of applause for Dan Kahn, please. Thank you, and all yours. Please Thank you, talk Arpit. about what is there. Thank you, Arpit. So what can you expect in the next ONAP release? Uh, first of all, we continue to position ONAP as a key player in the context of open HAN. Early this year, we were already packaging some ONAP component to support the service manage orchestrator. And now what you will discover in the con release is uh, some architecture change in the policy to support the self-organizing network use case, so the Sun use case. In addition to that, we continue our cloud native architecture journey, and we did some significant change to modernize the code, to support, for example, service mesh, but also uh, to add additional workflow, which will enhance the CNF orchestrator that we have been developing over the past year. And we also add additional capabilities in our cross-carrier VPN use case, also called Blueprint. We start to add some network slicing capabilities, and we introduce some intent control loops for autonomous uh, network. So a lot of it's coming, 
And I really invite you to discover more concretely what we have done by some uh, demos and also talks that has been organized and uh, prepared for you during this event. So a little bit more to come. And in December, as an early Christmas gift, we will offer the own upcoming release in memory of Dan Cohn. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Catherine. Catherine. OK. Sorry, it'll take a couple of seconds. I have to do this. OK. Uh, so the next announcement is um, very interesting. And it is completely from the core and orchestration all the way to physical stores. OK. So please welcome on stage uh, Jason Long. He's the head of um, networking at Amazon Retail Technologies. Um, and. Uh, Please let us know what, what you're announcing. Great. Thanks, Arpit. Um, so I'm really excited to be here today to be able to announce uh, our production deployments with Dent So uh, in our Just Walk Out stores. Um, Dent is a, an open source ecosystem that's designed to be able to um, really have an optimized network operating system and hardware for edge deployments. And that's exactly what we needed for our Just Walk Out stores. So if you haven't seen our Just Walk Out technology, it's what we invented to be able to power the Amazon Go stores initially and are now deploying it more broadly. Um, there's actually a number of Amazon Go stores within several blocks of, of the venue here. So you can go check that out if you've never been. Um, so, but our, our Just Walk Out stores have a lot of similar uh, networking challenges as other edge use cases. And um, it, because of that, it really made it not uh, optimal to use uh, solutions that were designed for cloud deployments or for uh, data centers to be able to deploy to the edge. And that included our hardware and software we developed for our AWS data centers, but it also included other open source technologies and uh, disaggregated networking solutions uh, in the community and uh, that were targeted towards data center deployments. And so uh, several years ago, we joined with the other founding members of the Dent project uh, and the rest of the community that, that came together around that to create Dent. And um, through that project, we've been able to build this ecosystem of hardware and software that's optimized for edge networking use cases like ours. Um, and since then, we've deployed thousands of Dent devices now across our Amazon stores. Um, and every new Just Walk Out store that we launch today has Dent switches and routers in it um, as the foundation. And um, so if you'd like to learn more about Dent or about how we use it. We have uh, both a talk later this afternoon that I'll be giving uh, in the main summit, and we're doing a Dent mini summit as well, where we can go a little bit deeper into the different technical components. And so we'd love to have you join us there so you can learn more. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Awesome. OK. And the next enhancements to the announcement comes from our friend at uh, Open Compute. Um, there's a hardware software co-design. Uh, Bijan, where are you? Oh, that side, OK. So please welcome Bijan, who is the CTO of Open Compute Project. And uh, for those of you who do not know Open Compute, I'm sorry, right, you should. Um, but um, let's, let's talk about um, some of the partnerships and, and what we're doing to do hardware co uh, software co-design. Good morning. Yeah, so uh, 30 seconds on OCP. Uh, we just had a global summit in San Jose. Uh, it was huge. There was a lot of people there, a lot of excitement for open source hardware. Um, we did uh, kick off a lot of interesting initiatives. I encourage you to guys go check out the website at uh, opencompute.org. Uh, um, sorry. Um, and uh, I think, you know, just to kind of you know, frame what we're trying to do here is we did make an announcement at OCP at the Global Summit, and I'll kind of just repeat it here. Um, we've we've been collaborating since 2017 on a lot of different projects at Linux Foundation to OCP, and um, in the past, you know, it's been I mean, it's been great, right? We've, we've had a lot of very successful, high energy products or projects like Sonic and. And there's, and there's some upcoming ones too. So just from the slides, you could see that we have uh, something coming up called Calyptra, which is a really exciting hardware root of trust project. Uh, that, with the Chips Alliance, is going to be pretty big. 
there's a lot of support in the industry for it. Um, we have a kind of a redevelopment of our edge hardware. We have very popular edge hardware out there. It's uh, uh, probably, if you go to our website, you could search for edge hardware and you'll find it. It's the most searched thing in our website. <laughs> so uh, edge is pretty hot, our hardware is pretty hot, but we're kind of reinventing it. And one of the things that we're gonna do, I'll talk about in a second, is with you guys here at, at, at Linux Foundation. Um, we also have collaborations with CNCF, and we're also intra-heterogeneous computing, which that means processing multiple types. So we have uh, our RISC-V and our uh, open power uh, communities that are building on with those platforms. And we intend to work with uh, Linux Foundation to kind of make that better. But so the, the meat of the potatoes here is <laughs> what we have done is in the past, you know, hardware projects have been pretty simple. Um, you start with the problem, you solve it, and it's usually the minimum viable product, right? So you take the, the most simple aspects of it and you solve it and you, you introduce it. Well, in the past, we've worked with Linux Foundation. You guys have come and built software for it. It's been great. To kind of transcend uh, the problems that we have that we're facing now with like Moore's Law limitations and things like this, we need to kind of be you know, more collaborative. So what we, have, what we have announced, what we announced at, at OCP, and what we're kind of um, letting you guys, you know, kind of know is that we're very excited to do a hardware software co-design. And what that means is we're gonna form virtual communities. These virtual communities will have, consist of you guys and our hardware guys. We'll get together before there's anything. We'll build a spec, we'll design it, and then we'll go make stuff. So we're really excited about it, <laughs> as That's you can great. tell. <laughs> so uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, to working with a lot of you guys and uh, appreciate you guys have a great week. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Bijan. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then uh, we have a few more announcements. Uh, we have Infosys joining as a Platinum member. We have Emerson Zier joining as a Premier for LF Edge. We have Marvel joining as a Premier member for Sonic. So again, these are just like announcements in a press release. But you know, since we have uh, we have uh, the people here, I just want to focus on those projects. So please welcome Stefan uh, from uh, Orange. Uh, he's the head of architecture there. And he's going to talk about a very new, exciting project that we are announcing. And this is uh, very, very exciting. So go for it. Hello, everybody. Uh, as, as you say, I work uh, with, with Orange in the telco port. And um, as we know, the telco cloud uh, ecosystem is really fragmented today. And it slowed down how cloud native transformation and it's a huge point for us. And uh, we launched that initiative named Silva uh, to provide an homogeneous telco cloud framework for the entire industry. And it should help the ecosystem uh, to use a common technology uh, which be distributed, secured, and easy to operate. We are initiating this uh, community with seven m members, as you can see in the slide, with the main goals are to uh, release the cloud software framework, to develop a, a reference implementation, uh, and to also solve European specific challenges around the security, uh, energy efficiency, data, and uh, federated age, and also to provide a validation center to validate network function uh, on top of uh, this, uh, this framework. Uh, we are very exciting uh, today uh, to launch this uh, Silva within the Linux Foundation Europe uh, to uh, leverage on active and innovative open source uh, projects. And I take the opportunity today to invite you to participate and to contribute technically on that community project uh, to, uh, to address the hardware needs, uh, the green aspect, the performance monitoring, the life cycle management, and also take the opportunity to uh, validate your network function on top of uh, this framework to be uh, perhaps easy to be um, quickly introduce in our network. Thank you very much. Thank you, that's great.
Okay, so I think that brings us to the end of the announcements. There were more, but I just said, let's just do a press release on that. We don't have time for everything, but this is exciting. Base platform framework from LFN, for example, right, the plumbing, is now being used on top by countries, governments, regions, etc. So you can see here, EU-specific requirements, right, whether it's on reference implementation, security, energy, federation, etc., sit on top of, they're not reinventing the wheel, they're using what is being done in LFN, just like U.S. government, which you will hear from tomorrow. Uh, but good, good, very good project, Silva, so please participate. So with that, I'm going to wrap up by giving you a quick overview. Um, you know, just trying to be a little cheesy on 5G and play with this five, but it's the year of 5G, so we have five tracks you can attend. Uh, there are five daily keynotes, if you don't count mine. Uh, there's five mini summits, just happened to be, okay? I, we didn't create this. Uh, and there are five days of brain challenges, including a DNTF or a developer and testing forum at the end. So a choice is yours. The, the, the most important thing is you're here, you have been approved to travel by your company, and please take advantage of that and don't just chit chat in the hall is all I say. <laughs> the programming comes to you by a fantastic programming committee. Uh, so thank you very much. If you like it, it's LF, LF's policy. If you don't like it, those are the people uh, that you can talk to, okay? With that, welcome to uh, One Summit, okay? So thank you very much.